Welcome back, everyone. This is Jaronitis recording episode four. Four. It's four. We'll go with four. If I'm wrong, well, sue me. Anyway, Jaronitis recording episode four of Feed the Beast Unleashed. I have changed a couple things while you've been away. <laughs> like you've been away for a long time. Uh, we put some barrels here to hold uh, excess cobblestone, dirt, and gravel. We've made some clear glass, which if you don't know how to make clear glass, it is detailed here in the, I think it's in the Mighty Smelting book. Let's hit that up real quick. And there it is. You melt glass and you get clear glass. You can also melt uh, sand because sand makes glass, you can melt sand and make it directly into clear glass. So, I did. And I made some cool windows. And when I walk around and there's a creeper standing there, I think he's going to walk right at me. And then I remember it's glass and it'll be okay. Uh, I also upgraded the storage and gave it some, uh, some various signs showing what's what. As you can see, plants and growing stuff and wood stuff and tools and equipment and gems and crystals. As you can see, I'm up to 12 diamonds. I actually can get a lot more than that, but I have not gone and mined them yet. Um, I actually wanted to show you guys because I found something that I think is pretty fascinating. So I'll show you that here in a minute. And of course, the mob drops and so on. Um, we have over here, I've expanded the Orberry farm. And now we have quite the Orberry farm going. And this will hopefully... Ah, crap. This will hopefully make uh, for some good uh, ore production at some point. Anyway, this stuff grows better in the dark, so we're going to close this back up. Let me put this book away. And, okay, didn't know I could do that. You know, actually, I knew that could happen, but I still don't know how it happens. I'll have to get back to that at some point. Um, as you can see, I've expanded this to hold more stuff. I've made three ingot castings here, and then the casting basins over here. I intend to actually put more casting basins here along this back wall, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Now, you might be saying to yourself, why, Jaren, you're holding something special there. I am holding something special. I kind of remembered something that I had somehow been able to forget, and uh, I'll get to that here in just a second. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to explain to you a couple things. First off, I'm going to show you that I made alumite. If people are not familiar with alumite, we can go and show you the molten alumite recipe. You can melt alumite bricks, you can melt alumite ingots. But if you already have those, then you already know how to make the stuff, so this is kind of a useless you know, thing. So, here is the alloy smeltery that shows you that you take molten obsidian, molten iron, and molten aluminum, and you mix them together. You've got one part obsidian, one part iron, and roughly two and a half parts of aluminum, because making it just three parts would have been too easy. So you mix all that stuff, you put those in there, and it melts together and automatically combines into alumite. So I then made this pickaxe out of alumite. I then added a diamond to it, which gave it an extra durability, and then I added redstone and I added lapis to it. And we'll show you this right here. Get that out of there. As you can see, I added a diamond. I added redstone, which is 99 out of 100. I should add one more on that, but uh, yeah, just not gonna. And then I added 56 pieces of lapis. Um, I was going to up this to a lot more lapis, but I, had, I decided to use my lapis elsewhere. I will upgrade this further later, but adding the lapis, as you see right there, shows Fortune 1. Uh, the haste and the luck are both... The haste is from the redstone, the luck is for the lapis. And as you add more lapis, it'll add more fortune. Up to, I think, a maximum of Fortune 3, but I'm not actually sure on that. The next thing I did, uh, first off, I remembered that you can actually make pieces out of cobblestone. I'm sitting here going, oh, I need more flint, oh, I need more flint. You don't need more flint. I've got enough cobblestone to build a mountain, literally. So you can actually take these patterns and make cobblestone pieces directly. 
So, since I realized that, I decided that I was going to go ahead and make a stone excavator and a stone hammer. So, you use the hammer head pattern, as you can see right here, and I made a stone hammer head. And we'll get into that real quick. Let me show you what all is required for that. When you get the hammer, it shows you that you need two large plates, a hammer head, and a tough tool rod. So, uh, hammers are naturally effective against zombies. Well, actually, any undead, but I say zombies because that's what I run into most. And uh, it has an area of effect of 3x3. Three three. Now, I'll show you exactly what that means here in just a second. First, I'm going to show you the excavator. The excavator requires the broad shovel head, a large plate, a tough tool binding, and a tough tool rod. And it also has a 3x3. Three three. Now, I chose to make these out of cobblestone because what you make them out of is what is required to repair them. And since I have a bajillion cobblestone, I can then break these as much as I want and then just fix them and use up cobblestone, which at the moment I have no real use for. So that's why I went ahead and made those out of that. Now, I went ahead and made the hammer, and I upgraded the hammer, and I'll show you this. I put a diamond on it. I put 197 lapis on it, that, and that got it up to Fortune 2. You can see that it has Looting 2 on it as well, because Fortune and Looting are connected. Uh, they are the same thing. You know, Looting is a weapon, and Fortune is a, a digging implement. So since this can be used as a weapon and as a digging implement, it, and putting the lapis on it gave it both Fortune and Looting. So if I kill zombies with it or kill skeletons with it, it has the Looting effect as well. That's why I used most of the lapis on this, because it's giving me double the effect. Now, as I get it up to 450, it'll go even higher. I also added a diamond to it, because the diamond changed it to the mining level obsidian. Okay, that means I can use this on obsidian. <laughs> and then, of course, the redstone, just to make things faster. Uh, it has no modifiers left, and, well, that's actually just fine. I can actually give it one more modifier by using a block of gold and a diamond to give it one extra modifier. And I might do that at some point, but for now, I've got plenty of other stuff I need to fill out. So, why did I make these, you ask? Because they're new toys, and I've never really had a good chance to play with them. So now, we're going to go downstairs, and we're going to play with them. Let me show you, first off, that I did this. I carved this room out with this hammer and with this excavator. The excavator is used on dirt, sand, and uh, gravel, and any variation of dirt, sand, and gravel, and it will mine the 3x3 three three area. I will show you what that means here in just a second. And the hammer works on any solid thing, such as stone, cobblestone, ores, up to a point, depending on what level mining you have, and that does a 3x3 three three as well. So I carved this room out, and as we come down here, I carved this area as a mining area. And this is where I'm going to show you how this stuff works. Then I'm going to show you some of the other stuff I found. And I'm, of course, going to show you some coordinates for some really fun stuff in case you're following along. So what we're going to do here is, since this is a hammer and it affects ores and, and stone and stuff, and it does a 3x3 three three area. So a 3x3 three three area is the first nine bricks that you see. So I'm pointing here at the center brick. It's going to go one brick in every direction around this. So here we go. Boom. So it did a 3x3 three three area. And that's why I made this thing. Because it makes mining a lot easier. Now, it can be faster. If it was made out of better materials, it would be faster. But I added the redstone to it to make it a little bit faster to make up for the fact that it's made out of not bad materials, but not the best materials. Now, if you're first, if you're just starting out in the game, and you just, you know, you, you have to make the tool station, and the tool station is really easy to make. You just need a blank, um, I think it's a blank pattern over top of a, uh, a block of wood. That might be the stencil table. Anyway, if you look in the, uh, in the book, it shows you how to make it. Then you need four blocks of iron in order to make the advanced tool station, which makes it so you can make the hammer. So I would suggest, if you're just starting out, to go ahead and save up your iron until you can get four iron blocks. 
And when you get the four iron blocks, you can make your advanced tool station. And then the advanced tool station, you can make a cobblestone hammer. And then you can go mining with it. And that will make the early game mining very simple to do. So, that being said, let's show you some of the other stuff I've done. I'm closing that off because when I walked in here at one point, there was a creeper right around the corner. That was because I hadn't put any torches because I'm a genius. Now there's torches, but I'm still going to block it off because I just don't want to take that chance again. Oh wait, I didn't show you the excavator. Let me show you the excavator. The excavator works on dirt the same way the hammer works on stone. So, like I said, 3x3. Three three. Now, depending on what surface of the block you click on determines where it's going to function. Like, if I were to click at the top of this block right here, it will dig the first nine bricks down. Now, if I'm in the hole and I click on this side of this block, it will take these six blocks right here because there are no three blocks up there. But if there were three blocks up there, it would take them too. So it basically goes bricks uh, or spots around the one that you're clicking on. If you're on the side of the brick, it goes sideways. If you're clicking on the top, it goes down. And so on and so forth. So I'm going to leave that hole in the ground so I can fall into it a couple more times later. So during my little excavations and having fun with this, I dug into the side over here looking I think I was I was mining something out of the side so I went into the side right here and I was looking around and then I saw that there was a little opening right here so I went over and I said oh look there's an opening right here and I looked down and I said look it's a hot springs cool and then I looked and I saw that there was diamonds in the water of the hot springs so I came in here and I excavated around by the way, hot springs with these bubbles, when you jump in, it gives you regeneration. So that's really cool. Uh, I tried to move some of the hot spring water, and if you pull it into a bucket, it's no longer hot spring water, it's just normal everyday water. So be careful, this stuff does not reform source blocks, and you can't move it. So if you pull it all up or destroy it all, it's gone. You'll have to go find yourself a new pool of it. I kind of had to find that out the hard way. Anyway, so come to find out that this hot springs was right next to my stairway didn't even know it walked right past it and it was literally one block to the side and there was the opening and it was it's pretty cool as you can see there's quite a few diamonds here uh, this set of diamonds you can see there's six here but there's also six more in a direct lower section and it's in the same form as the higher section so I left this here in case you guys wanted the coordinates uh, you should be able to see them on the mini-map on the screen. Uh, plus 294, plus 290 is right in front of them. If you want to be standing on top of them, it's plus 294, plus 288, and a depth of 16. So if you're playing along and you want to find 12 diamonds, please, have at it. So, I'm going to use my hammer because my hammer has Fortune 2 on it. Now, it says an it's an obsidian level hammer, and I didn't think it would work on diamonds, but then I remembered that iron picks can harvest diamonds. Therefore, this should work. Here we go. Now, keep in mind, we have 12 diamond brick. So, how many diamonds are we going to get out of 12 diamond brick with Fortune 2 on? There it is, and we got 26. 26 diamonds out of 12 because I had the fortune 2. That is also why I used all my lapis on this hammer. Well worth it. So I've got plenty of diamonds for a good starting run. So this is very interesting, but the interesting part doesn't end there. I'm going to grab this redstone real quick. So I was also digging a little bit further down and let me out. So I was down here digging this tunnel which goes on for quite a ways. I'll show you here in just a second. But I also dug on the other side of my stairwell. And what do I find? I find gold. Not only do I find gold, but it's in the exact same pattern as the diamonds were just a few levels up. Actually, eight levels up to be technical, because we were at 16 and now we're at eight. We were at 16, right? I think we were at 16. I'm going to assume we are at 16. So I thought that was interesting. If you all want to find this gold, here it is. And I'm just going to mine it real quick. There's no real need to to mine it with fortune, because fortune doesn't work on ore blocks. But, uh, yeah, lots of extra gold there. Thought you might like that. Continuing on, we're going to run down this way a little bit. 
and I will give you the coordinates of some more diamonds that I found. There was actually some diamonds, I think they were right here. I actually wound up mining them before I thought about it. But if you're heading towards the other diamonds, you should find these diamonds that were roughly in this location. Again, you can look at the coordinates on the minimap to see those. So we're going to run down this way. As you can see, there's plenty of stuff that I passed by. I was just having fun with my new toy with the hammer and just bashing through. And here's another four diamonds. Um, we have 26, so let's see what we get out of these. That was four blocks, and we went from 26 to 32, so four blocks got us six. Six? Six. I do math well. Anyway, so that was another cool little spot that you found some more diamonds. Now, as you can see, this goes on for quite a bit longer, and I did this because I was having fun with my hammer. It's just a fun tool. You know, if you ever get bored of mining with a pickaxe, get yourself a hammer. You'll find that it's not as boring anymore. Eventually, I'll get bored of the hammer, but for now, it's just so much fun to play with. You know, you can cut these nice wide path pathways, and it's so easy to use. And when you run into dirt, well, you got the excavator. So look, excavate away. Now, it's always good to have a pickaxe to clean up these little mishaps here, because doing this... It cuts a little hole in the roof. And that ruins the uniformity of it. And that just drives me nuts. Actually, it's not that bad. But if you're one of those uh, obsessive compulsive types, well, you wouldn't like to have that be like that. The other thing that I like about this hammer and the fortune is coal. I need lots of coal. I will always need lots of coal. And when I have this, the fortune that breaks the coal uses fortune on the coal so I'm actually gathering quite a bit of coal when we go back upstairs I don't know if I opened that chest when I first logged in but I'm going to this hammer also works very well on lapis lapis gets fortuned as well So I can see there's lots of iron here. I have enough iron to literally, you know, choke multiple camels. So, but since this is right in the pathway, I'm going to get it anyway, even though I just said I don't care. Because eventually I will care. Eventually I'll need more iron than I have, and, well, then I'll feel stupid for leaving this. So this is actually a really effective way to mine and the fact that you can make the pieces out of cobblestone makes it really easy to make this stuff and makes it for a very easy beginning game mining. So, you know, when you have to mine stuff and you just don't want to spend all that time, well, you don't have to. Uh, secondary side note, when you are using the hammer, be careful where you are standing. If you use it on the brick in front of you and it takes the brick in front of you out, and there's lava underneath that you didn't know was there, it's a whole new way to make the legendary faux pas, or bad thing, of mining directly down. This makes mining down a lot more dangerous because you're mining a lot further down, and you may not realize that your footing is going to disappear and send you into lava. Did I mention I was finding a lot of gold? It seemed to be very well... Uh, set up for gold for a while and now my path is all messed up anyway we're gonna throw some torches on this and we're gonna leave it alone because even with the hammer it's still mining and mining is generally boring so we're gonna do something more interesting we're gonna go mining all right so we're gonna walk on back the mining that we're going to do, by the way, this right here was just a little bit of lava that I found. Uh, I mined some of the obsidian because we're going to go to the nether at some point. And I had so much stuff in my inventory that I actually threw some of the cobblestone into this lava here. Secondary thing also is that this hammer, because I gave it the diamond, works on obsidian. It still takes quite a while because ultimately I'm using a stone hammer. 
but I'm mining obsidian with it. So it takes about the same amount of time as your basic diamond pickaxe. But when it's done, it actually burns you to death. No! Wow, that was kind of epic. I can't believe I just burned to death. Well, at least it caught it on camera. I wonder how much my stuff burned. Oh, boy. Probably my hammer that I used all that uh, good stuff on. Probably all those diamonds. Did I mention that when you're using the hammer, you have to be a little bit more careful when it comes to lava? Yeah, that sounds kind of familiar. Let me grab some dirt. On the plus side, I should be able to make myself a new set of pretty much everything I just lost. Whatever I just lost. How far down was it? Was it this far down? Yes. Did I mention I like to fall into bad places? No, that's not it either. Have I gone past it already? Nope, here it is. Okay, wow. We are going to have lost quite a bit of stuff. This is extremely unfortunate. I don't see the diamonds anywhere. There's my pickaxe. That's kind of nice. The shovel, the hammer. And... Wow, all those diamonds just went up in smoke. Well, if you didn't watch to laugh at me before, you can now. Ah, my diamonds. Well, in any case, I showed you how the hammer works <laughs> on obsidian. Oh my god. Okay, so and you might also notice that I made myself an alumite uh, sword. La -di da Now I'm just mad. Uh, well, add that one to the record books, people. That was an epic fail. Moving on. Well, now I really need to get my automated mining going because now I gotta go find a bunch more diamonds because I just lost all those diamonds. Arrgh. All right, so I've teased you enough time on this, and we've got about 10 minutes left in this episode, give or take. And Because, of course, being who I am, I didn't set my timer exactly when I started. I started it, but not right when I started recording. So, we're going to get up here, and we're going to see that, thankfully, some of the diamonds that I may found before... I actually did bring up, so I've got 12 diamonds. That doesn't make me feel very good about losing 32 diamonds. That's kind of a, a really, really, really big deal. But hopefully we won't have any more trouble of that nature. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't do that. I am forever getting in trouble with lava. It's my nature. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to make a computer. Nope, not miscellaneous junk. Junk, crystals, and dust. So we're going to need one piece of redstone. And then we're going to need some smooth stone, which I'm cooking up right now. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I have the smooth stone cooking up glass because it requires six glass to make glass panes. And we're going to need one glass pane. So there's how you make the glass panes. Then we're going to take the smooth stone and we're going to put a redstone piece in the center and a glass pane and that makes a computer. So we're going to take this computer and then we're going to go over here and we're going to get, do I have any iron ingots? Yes we do. We're going to need seven iron ingots and we're going to need in the wood stuff a chest and then we're going to need the computer that we built so we're going to take the computer I believe it goes here and then the chest goes beneath it and then the iron goes all around it and that makes a turtle so then we're going to need to go back into the wood stuff again and get some sticks that I don't have so we're going to go ahead and get some And we're going to make a diamond pickaxe. 
So then we take the diamond pickaxe and we combine it with the turtle and that makes the mining turtle. The mining turtle is going to be very useful here shortly and I'm going to show you exactly how here in just a minute. Let's see, I need to get this stuff back. Give me just a second to put some of this stuff away. And we will show you how the rest of this is going to work. I'm going ahead and letting this craft, craft up the rest of the glass, or cook up the rest of the glass, because we're going to need it. So let's see. What am I missing now? Oh, actually, that's kind of funny. I also made, if you notice, I have a lot more wood here. In the tools, I made a lumber axe. Uh, let me explain this to you real quick because I just realized that I'm not actually ready to use the mining turtle yet. So that will have to be for the next episode and I'll show you guys how to access that yourselves. So we're going to go over here and I'm going to show you this lumber axe. The lumber axe, when we get back, I will show you the recipe for it. If you have your own tool station, you can just look it up and it will show you where that is as well. So the lumber axe cuts down entire trees. As you can see, I just cut the, the bottom section of that and the entire tree came down. I actually cut all the leaves off of these. Okay, what kind of wood is this? Oak wood, pine wood. Ah, the reason that that didn't work is because there's no leaves on top of this wood. The ax determines that it is a tree because it has leaves on it. So since there's leaves up there, this one should chop down all the way. Now it didn't take the very bottom block because it only chops above the block that you chopped. Now if there if it doesn't determine that it's a tree, it chops a three by three by three section. So that's why that chopped like that. And I went around and chopped down a lot of trees. Boop. And there goes that entire tree. So, that's the lumber axe. It's pretty cool. It's going to make, you know, it makes chopping trees down a lot easier. It makes gathering wood a lot easier. Uh, if you're in a jungle biome, it will actually chop down the jungle trees, the big thick ones that are four, four, bl four bricks wide. You know, it's got four, four pieces of, uh, four logs to, to the trunk. It will actually chop down that entire tree as well. I believe that the limitation, uh, it has a limitation on the height, and the height limitation I believe is 30 bricks. So I don't think it will chop any higher than 30 bricks. Okay, so now we've got roughly five minutes left. I'm going to go, and since I don't have the, I'm not prepared to do actually the turtle setup yet, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of basic power production. So we want to make a very, very basic power production so that we can do a couple of very basic things. So we're going to want a hobbyist steam engine. And there's only one thing that's hobbyist. So the hobbyist steam engine is gold-plated gears, a piston, a glass pane, and gold nuggets. The gold-plated gears are stone gears surrounded by gold nuggets. And the stone gears is a wood gear surrounded by cobblestone. And a wood gear is just a bunch of sticks. So, we're going to go ahead and make a couple of those. Now, if you remember, I got uh, inside the village that I looted, there was a guy with a piston. And I stole it. And now we're going to use it. That way I don't have to make another piston. Now, if you are interested in making a piston, it's actually a vanilla recipe, but I will show it to you nonetheless. That way, if you need to make it, you can. Piston is just four cobblestone, two on each side, a piece of redstone, an iron ingot, and any kind of wooden planks. And that will make you a piston. All right, so now you know how to make that. So I need to go back in the wood stuff. We're gonna need some of this, and we're going to make some wooden gears. Now I know I'm gonna need a lot of these in the future, so I'm just gonna make a bunch of them now. The other thing we're going to need is we're going to need some cobblestone. So then we're going to take the cobblestone and we're going to make cobblestone like this. And then we're going to put the gears in the center of that. And it's going to make stone gears. So now we're going to need some gold nuggets. We're actually going to need quite a few of them. So I'm going to go ahead and turn these into nuggets. 
And we're going to take the wood, the stone gears, and we're going to put the nuggets around them like this. Now, realistically, I should probably make several of these engines, so I'm just going to go ahead and get the stuff ready, because I will probably make one this episode, and in between episodes, I'll probably make several more, but you guys don't really need to see the several more. So now we've got the gold-plated gears, we've got the piston, we've got the gold nuggets, and we've got the glass. So we put this here and here, and the piston here, the gold nuggets go across the top, and the piece of glass. Ta-da! One hobbyist steam engine. The hobbyist steam engine takes, uh, it makes steam by burning coal. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what else can be used in it, but we're going to use coal because it's coal. We like it. So, we're going to set this up in... I don't know. We're going to set it up in a room I don't have yet. Uh, for now, I'll probably just make a little indentation in this wall because I'm not going to use it for a whole lot of stuff yet. So, we're going to place this here and we're going to put a bucket of water in it and then we're going to refill the bucket and refill the engine and refill the bucket and refill the engine and refill the bucket and refill the engine I think you understand where I'm going with this so when you access it when you finally fill it with enough water when you right click on it by the way you right click the bucket of water on it to fill it it shows you this neat little thing right here and it shows you that you've got plenty of water and then we put the coal here and now nothing's happening because we haven't actually turned it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a lever, which a lever is sticks over cobblestone, and that gets you a lever. Uh, you don't have to use a lever. You can actually use a redstone torch or anything of that nature. And when you flip the lever, if you look here, it's now showing the fire burning, and it is now showing heat building up right here. Once the heat reaches 100 degrees Celsius, it will start converting the water into steam, and the steam will then make it function and produce power. Right now, it's showing 0.0, .0 Minecraft jewels being, being produced because Minecraft jewels aren't being produced because it hasn't built up steam. Now, as you see, when it hit 100 degrees Celsius, we're building up steam, and we're also making Minecraft jewels. Now, as you see, the water is going down. Now, if the water runs out and it's still burning it will overheat and it has a very good chance of exploding and we don't like things exploding so we're gonna keep it full of water now you can do this manually as you can see here you don't actually you know, every time it shows it has even the tiniest bit of water missing it will be allowed to take more uh, as long as it doesn't run completely out you can go ahead and continue to produce power so I don't really need the power right now so I'm gonna turn it off but it's keeping the power buffered inside it but unfortunately it won't maintain that power it will fall on off so next episode we're gonna start the automated mining we're going to build a machine that is going to use this power to make a couple things that we're gonna use for Tinker's Construct uh, amongst other things I'm not sure exactly what else we'll cover we'll see how much of that episode gets used up Thank you all for watching, we'll see you next time, and remember to spread the gaming.